Okay, so we got short-term fuel trims spiked really, really bad while I was on the freeway. Really bad. Maxed out. I think it, was, I think it maxed something like 33%. Extremely bad. Car problems got your head in the sand? Be triumphant. You have a champion to help you. Huzzah! Welcome to the D.E. Nichols channel. Autobotter.com <laughs> Throttle more leans it out even more. That doesn't help. That slows you down. So I eased up on the gas pedal, which is actually a throttle cable pedal. And when I bounced off of it, I was able to get a slight amount of acceleration, almost maintain my speed while it hicked up and jerked and had trouble and kind of feathered it until all that asking for extra fuel finally got the, the O2 sensor to start spiking again, which is good because you stay lean like that and you manage to keep your engine not to die, it'll eat your engine. Um, I don't know if my engine has aluminum piston heads, but if it did, if fuel mixtures aren't right, it eats the metal instead. Okay. Well, anyway, that's a long-term problem. This is a short-term issue. So imagine up and down is zero. Short-term fuel trims spike up to 33 at maximum. Fuel trims come up to 18%. Short-term comes back down and starts keeping an O2 sensor happy again. Even though this is only because I'm barely pushing on the throttle. Hey, if you push on the throttle anymore, when you can't produce enough fuel, uh, short term is going to go nuts again. Remember my right hand or the left side of your screen. No, the right side of your screen, my right hand is long term. And then it corrected itself. The fuel pump was able to keep up again. So then short term went rich. It's like, okay, we got too much fuel and it was matching long term. And long term started to come down. It took a while and it, it, it only felt this issue in the fuel map where I'm pushing on the gas like I need to on the freeway. So the rest of the time it drove no more because it only acted up during that exact fuel map. But anything next to it, the truck kind of ran funny because it didn't know how to run on having enough fuel. Short term kept correcting and as I came home, everything was fine and dandy. Go to the dentist. Had to take another freeway trip in the truck. And same thing happened, but this time I'm in traffic, I'm in the city. So I'm realizing every time it's a nice warm day, this fuel pump is crapping out. This fuel pump may have never been good, it just only pretended to be good because it hadn't seen any heat. And it's not like it didn't have plenty of gas tank. That's why you keep your gas at least half full. Because you keep it at least half full, you have lots of cold gas around your fuel pump, theoretically, really hot days, I suppose that might not even be cold. But, it would feel cold because it evaporates off your hand so quickly. You've got your gasoline, and that keeps it cool, but still not cool enough for that fuel pump. So, I replaced it, never checked fuel pressure. Why? It was always behaving when I was back at, at my shop, or where, you know, I have my nice equipment and stuff. So, that's the story. That's what I'm sticking to it. And this is for Ty, because at the end I asked, what's short-term fuel trim for? He's like, uh, I forgot. I was like, okay. Because I'm trading lessons. He helped me do my fuel pump. I'm giving him lessons. Short-term fuel trim's job is to keep O2 sensor doing a nice wave pattern. It only goes one direction. But a nice wave pattern across 0.45 millivolts. And that's the short-term fuel trim's job. Long term is to remember what happened before and set rich or set lean and then get short term pretty close to zero so it can do its bounce to feed your catalytic converter to keep that reaction going. That's in it. a short uh, lesson. Assuming you, you didn't know fuel trims after my long lesson, assuming you did learn fuel trims. How about that? <laughs> All right, get out there and work on something.